what's going on everybody? My name is Chad. Right here, I have my computer because we're doing a textbook review. Now I do feel bad for the review table of knowledge, but because this is virtual, I can't really get my hands on it. There's no handsiness. But it is really cool because as I show you guys this, you can follow along yourselves. I'll leave links for everything in the description down below. But if you want to learn a little bit about the background of this, the level you can expect from it, and some stuff the site doesn't even tell you, that's what I'm here for. That's what this video is for. And let's just jump right into the video. So without further ado, let's shrink down, down into the computer view, and here we are on the landing page of Irodori Seikatsu no Nihongo. So, I learned about this, luckily, from many of the people in my personal Discord, so you guys should go check them out, you should go thank them, they recommended this to me, I checked it out, and let me tell you, as someone who is, I don't know if I've reviewed the most textbooks, Japanese textbooks on YouTube, I gotta be, like, in the upper echelon. I mean, we're coming on 20 or so, I think. Maybe my numbers might be off. And out of all of those, especially for beginner books, this is pretty dang cool. There are some things that we need to talk about because this does not fit uh, exactly perfectly into my old category, so I can't really grade this. But I can, by their own estimations, put this into a perspective, I think, that makes sense. So, what is Irodori? as I have here on the screen. So Irodori is meant to be, to my understanding, uh, a free and not pirated. This is not some sketchy site. This is from the official site. Uh, if any of you guys know the Japan Foundation, they kind of run the JLPT. They have tons of resources besides that, but that tends to be the really popular one. If you guys know the Marugoto textbooks, that is, I don't know if that's a replacement for this, or maybe that's like higher learning, but that tends to be the big textbook that people associate with these guys. And this is a new one that's come out that I think is totally worth our time and attention. So it comes with basically two different textbooks. Uh, you have elementary one, elementary two, and I've done the math because these books don't really explain it tremendously well. What is this book for? Is this beginner, intermediate, advanced textbook? What the, What is the whole point? Uh, these two textbooks together make up what they consider an A1 or A2 level uh, experience. Now, for those of you who maybe are, I don't know, maybe you're not familiar with Japanese, assessment at all, language assessment at all. Uh, maybe you're only familiar with the JLPT because that tends to be the popular one. These guys are using that same sweet European system, A1 through C2, uh, C2 being the highest, A1 being the most introductory. And these actually take on levels A1 and A2 cumulatively, which sounds kind of, I don't know, in my head, if I just picture these, I picture something that is like maybe N5, not that there's a correlation. But there's really not, because this is put out by the people who make the JLPT, and they actually did a small study, and I'll have links to all these uh, in the description down below. If you guys look at this, this is the relationship between the JFS-based evaluation, which is the, the kind of European A1 through C2 type thing, uh, to the JLPT, based on the pass or fail determination that you get from those. Uh, they did a trial survey here in 2011 with 96 participants, uh, in the Japan Foundation language courses, the specific ones that they teach, as well as a 2013 through 2016 study that has 967 learners. And they compared it to how they did uh, based on the JFS evaluation to their own JLPT. And the results are kind of weird. Uh, it's sort of hard to explain. So let's take a look. This is N5 down here. And you can see passes the dark purple, fail, is kind of the light pinky, light purpley color. And as you can see, so people that passed the A1 overwhelmingly failed the N5. But people that passed the N5 typically passed the A2. But now we're gonna we're gonna move up a little bit, right? So the N4 failed more. People passing the N4 failed more on that same N2 than the people that passed the N5. So there's an inverse correlation. So let's come up to the N2. You can see here on the N2 that they did about the same uh, on the A2 as well as the B1, right? About 65% pass rate. Uh, but they did better on the B2. They did 86% they did pass the B2. So again, the higher the level went up, the better they did rather than the worst. And an even weirder correlation is when you get to N1 because N1, the majority failed the A2, the easier test than the B2 of that was compared to the N2, and I'm saying a lot of words, hopefully the screen is helping you guys a little bit. Uh, they did about a little bit better on the B1. They majorly passed, majoritively, I can speak English, passed 
the B2, and 77% past the C1. That's a huge percentage. So it's very weird. It's almost like the higher you get on the JLPT, you suck at the lower levels of the evaluation, but you do better on the higher evaluations. So I don't really know how this correlates. In fact, if you look on this page, they say right here, there is no correspondence between the tests. They test on different things. The different levels want different things, and it's just not really uh, what it's made for. So if you are looking at this textbook, do not be scared or afraid to think that maybe this is testing different things. I mean, again, someone can pass the N1 and essentially not be able to speak or write Japanese at all, right? Because all you have to do is memorize uh, the knowledge and be able to listen and read. All the, all the passive skills, it doesn't test on the active skills like speaking and writing, like producing your own Japanese. So it makes sense that, I mean, if you just kind of beelined it straight towards N1 and passed, and you learn nothing about speaking and writing, which the A1, C2, whatever they call that system, I guess they call it the JAF system here, those people would probably score much on the lower side, right? The A2, the B1s, versus the people that took the time to focus on it as a holistic language, the speaking, the listening, uh, the writing, the reading, and those people probably scored higher on the, the A1 through C2 test as well as the JLPT, N2, and N1. So it depends on what your background is, it depends on did you study Japanese test taking or did you study Japanese? Those are kind of two different things. Uh, regardless of that point, I do want to show you guys this page here shows you uh, you have elementary one and two. So you get both of these books. You can download it as a PDF. You can see it on your screen in a web browser. It works on tablets, iPhones, your computer. It also gives you all the audio, which I found super essential. And I never say that. If you guys know me, I think the audio for most of these textbooks is worthless. This one was really helpful. And in fact, half this book you can't use without it. So highly recommend it. Just to give you guys a peek, these are all the example lessons that they have. And each one comes with the MP3 specific for that one. Uh, it comes with the PDF files, and if you guys look over here, this is one of the uh, the pages that are here. This has 20 pages in one chapter, and each book has 18 chapters, so two books of 18 chapters. Look at how much content there is, and by the way, it's a pretty decently high quality book. I mean, the colors are nice, the images are pleasing. Um, they actually didn't shy away from kanji. They kept the kanji, left the furigana above it, as well as an English translation. Uh, so you can even use just reading the textbook itself to get you uh, sentences and kanji if you're into sentence mining. It, I mean, look at how much work they have. All of that's listening work. Uh, you have lots of writing work, reading work, tons of grammar explanations. I mean, it's really interesting. Like, even down here, right, every chapter gives you a couple new kanji, and they'll give you, like, the sans serif version. They give you kind of the normal version you'll see on a textbook, as well as the handwriting. I don't know if that'll be super helpful, but, you know, why not? If you guys remember my criticisms of, I think it was Japanese for beginners, they try to add these guys, the Japanese lifestyle tips, and they talk about like politeness and how you're directing people or, or how to work out at a Japanese gym, and it gives you really nice cultural insights, by the way, that are bilingual. So it's like little short reading sections, all for you. I think that that's super dope, and I'm stoked that people are thinking about a virtual textbook because this would limitate limitate limit this would limit like what you can put into a textbook because you know you can only make a book so big and this book has almost a thousand pages between the two of them so online this could be a forty thousand page textbook not that it needs to ever be but it could be because it's virtual which means it could be so much more comprehensive now just before we uh, we move on just to show you guys you have kind of like a uh, question this isn't really a question this is like hey what is this book about what are the teaching materials it shows you what it's for uh, you know, how each chapter is kind of set up, that type of thing. Nothing too special there. These are frequently asked questions. So you can come here. There's not a lot of them. These are pretty straightforward questions anyways. Uh, and then obviously a contact us, which is pretty sweet because you can just let them know what's, what's going on. Be like, hey, I have a question, blah, blah, blah. They'll get to you. So all that to say, it's a pretty basic website. It's a pretty basic system, but there's so much good. Now, I would love to show more of this, but frankly, I think you guys are more than capable of kind of finding this website out. And also just at the top here, you can switch to English if you're not quite advanced enough to handle this website in Japanese. So I believe from this point on, if you guys want to learn more about it, you can go there. There are some stuff on this book that are not on the website that, yes, I sat there and actually kind of calculated and figured out myself. So let's go into those details right now. So I have my, uh, my book up here, and I just wanted to tell you guys, based on the levels that this kind of says that it is, and also based on that comparison to the JLPT, which is kind of arbitrary, 
I tried my best to compare this to what I think would be a, the most popular beginner textbooky system in print. The ones that would be most likely to be compared to this, and I assume that's going to be the Genki 1, the Genki 2, and you can either do the Tobita series, or you could do like the, the third Genki book, the Integrated Approach book. I just use the Integrated Approach book because it's all the same publisher for consistency, but more or less this will be roughly the same. So what is the difference? This free online textbook versus these paid textbooks that often are about $40 a piece. So about 120 bucks plus the workbooks, which would bring it to probably about a buck 60. This is US books, by the way. Well, the first book has 18 chapters, 69 lessons, 412 pages. The second book, 18 chapters, 78 sections, and 506 pages. So to compare this to Genki 1, Genki 2, and I'm using their integrated approach because I think that all of those combined equal about what this is trying to be. You have 38 chapters, which is exactly the same pretty much. Uh, these books have 36 chapters total. The physical textbooks have 280 lessons versus these guys' 147 lessons. And each one's about a thousand pages. One is 918 pages, one is 1,077. It's I mean, a thousand pages. But let's talk about content. Content seems to be where things are a little weird. So in the Irodori book, you have about ish 367 kanji words that they're teaching you so it's not broken down like normal textbooks where the kanji itself is kind of in its own section it shows you here's the kanji and then here's the words you learn with the kanji so you can kind of see which kanjis they teach and it doesn't correlate to the glpt so it's kind of just what they think goes with their a1 a2 the jaf test now just in the genki one the genki two and the intermediate three book we're talking 317 kanjis between Genki 1 and 2, as well as 1,067 kanji words, meaning I'm saying how many individual kanji words do you learn from these books, versus 167 individual kanji. That's way more kanji. Like, that's an insane amount more kanji. It's not even in the ballpark. The physical textbooks win. Now, words were also really hard to count, and I don't think I even can count, because in Genki 1, 2, and 3, uh, it's about 2,800 words you learn, which is pretty freaking good. In this one, I don't even, it depends on how you handle it, because if you're just doing the words with the English definitions that they present, there's 300 of them, 367. If you want to count all the words that you might learn from reading the Japanese prompts or those stories at the end, I don't know. I don't know what, they're not giving definitions for those really, except they're kind of doing it interlinear. It's just weird, guys, and I don't really know how to frame that so i'm just gonna say because it's easier for me to conceive i'm gonna give that to the genki books but again it's not a one-to-one -one comparison and it's gonna be really hard to make that comparison here now there is some things i really give these guys props for there's a lot of books that try and teach you how to write and how to read them and how they're used uh but the the frank fact is that a lot of that is not sufficient for each task that they're trying to get done in my opinion. But I really like how honest this site is. They actually have a section in their books that explains their kanji section and what they're trying to achieve. And they say, this is a section for you to practice elementary level kanji with words. The aim is to become able to see and understand the meaning of the kanji that you will need in everyday life and as necessary to be able to type these on a smartphone or a PC. That is brilliant because if I'm being completely honest, I'm a native English speaker, right? I hardly ever handwrite English. In my handwriting, I can't even read very much. Like if I'm writing something on like a long list of notes when I was in Japanese school in Japan, before I could write in Japanese and I had to have like, this word means this, right, in English. I went back later and realized I couldn't read what I wrote a lot of the time. Just me being a native English speaker, my handwriting sucks. So I kind of went in there with the same idea that I had in English. Look, my handwriting's garbage. I don't mind if my Japanese handwriting's garbage, but I want to be able to read what my friends text me, and I want to be able to type. Like, I want to send it back to them. And they're saying that this is what their thing is, which is why it's totally fine that they eliminate really any type of Japanese kanji writing practice for me. Because they're telling you exactly what they are. If you guys want to learn to write kanji, get a different book. Frankly, if you want to learn to write kanji, you should find a different book anyways. Because pretty much every textbook I've seen that has Japanese writing practice is extremely inefficient and insufficient. It's just my opinion though, and that's probably why you're here, because I can only give my opinion, I can't give other people's. So that is Irodori Seikatsu no Nihongo. 
Is it good? Is it worth your time? Yeah, it's free. It's available right now for you guys to download it. No charge with no pirating, nothing illegal. They're giving it to you. It doesn't mean that this is the end all be all, that it's the best textbook. Different things that you want to do are going to need different textbooks. But it's just a basic beginner book? Dang, man, a free book with all this free content for you? Made by people who just care about the Japanese learning community? I, I, I tend to rate that pretty high. But that's just me. I want you guys to click that link down below. This is not sponsored. I don't get money for, from these guys for mentioning this. This is just my opinions and thoughts. And I want you guys to check this book out for yourselves. Once you've checked it out, please, please, please leave a like and a comment down below telling me exactly what it is that you think. Do you love it? Do you hate it? It doesn't hurt my feelings. We're all different. We all have different goals and means and things that we want. Let's help not only each other, let's help the person five years from now that's going to stumble upon this video and go, hey, I wonder if this would help me, and they check out the comments. So let's, let's all give our thoughts in the comments down below, and let's try and make a cool form of ideas. If you guys like this video, be sure to like it down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, please leave them in the comment box down below. I do read all of them. All this information's in the description. Thank you to the Manga Club and the Patreon. If you guys would like physical manga books shipped from Japan to your front door for less than a cup of coffee a day, significantly less, like less than a dollar a day, check out my Patreon. The Manga Club is in Australia and in America. And hopefully next year will also be in Europe. Twitch TV forward slash Chad Zimmerman. Uh, at that's my chat on Twitter. Chad Zimmerman on all other platforms. Thank you all so much for the non-subscribers. And for the subscribers, I will see you in the subscriber only outro. Love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Alrighty, welcome to the subscriber only outro. I just want to show you guys some of the upgrades that I got to make. This is uh, my little studio room that you can see here. Uh, this is so cool because I actually got one of these guys to help uh, keep the sh like the really harsh shadows off of my face. This is some sort of, uh, I don't know, blurry umbrella device. But I just want to say thank you for that. And, and also specifically for anyone that gave money to the St. Chatty's video. If you guys can see, this is my crazy camera. Uh, this lens is what made our video look so good today, and I just want to say if you donated on the St. Chatty's Day uh, experience, even though I hate your guts because you shocked me and made me eat the hottest salsa on the face of the earth and all this other stuff, I do love you, and every little bit that I get from the Patreon, from all of these series, from St. Chatty's Day, all of this, I just want to say thank you guys. You guys really make this channel shine and make it so cool, so you guys are the champion of this subscriber-only outro. Thank you.